What's up guys, welcome to episode three of the Interval Hunter. In this video, we're going to be bringing you guys stages 21, 22, and stage two. Um, with stage one, our uh, cameraman ran out of battery and it was just a prone stage on Paradox. Um, so, you know, we'll talk about 21, 22, and one, two. And 21, 22, you'll kind of start to, to see it fall apart a little bit. Um, coming from the first couple episodes where I think the first couple episodes at the very end of the second episode in stage 20, yep. uh, you had dropped your first shot. We dropped our first shot as a team. And I that, dropped it, yeah. that is where uh, we started to see elevation issues, but we didn't actually see the trend until stage 22, which we'll talk about. And so in this video, what we'll do is we'll watch a stage and we'll debrief immediately afterwards based off of what, you know, what was going through our head. And then we'll sum everything up for this uh, video. So very first stage is 21. And here you go. Black post in front of the flag as you're sighting. First position is to the left of the black post. Second position is to the right of the limiter. Okay. You finally hired a guy, huh? Yeah. <laughs> There's an antelope to the uh, in between the two trees. The, the square is against the berm to the left of tree number one, left tree. Four twenty-five. Two point oh. I would do one nine for now. Second target. Distance. What distance? 425. 425. All right, so that's two mils. Two mils. Okay. And that is. All right, two trees. You got the two trees. Call contact. Contact. Okay, from the left of the second tree, left tree, you'll see got it. square, target board 21. I'm up. And then I got the prong point to the right. Yeah, 425. Distance for number two is. Closer, it's like 320. I got a right to left. Right to left, two mile an hour is about three tenths. Four miles an hour is about three tenths. Let's do three tenths right. And then dial three tenths again. I'm on it. Check your dope. Re engage. Dial your dope. Yep. 1.95, 2 mils. Give me 3 tenths right. It's dying out. Give me 2 tenths right. Give me a tenth right on this. 1.2. One, one, one tenth right. A tenth right. Plenty of time. Impact. Oh, 
two pens right on this one. Two mils, right? Alright, so uh, straight up. It's shifted. Left or right? Left or right? right. I'm gonna hold straight up. Alright. Impact! There you go. Alright, dial down. One, two. Uh, two tenths left. Dial back to two mils. Two tenths left. Tenths left. Tenth left. Impact. Looks like it favored right on that one. One two. All right, down to one two. Uh, same as your last shot. Whatever you did. Tenth left. Yep. There you go. Impact. Nice, good work. Got 15, gentlemen. Good job, man. Good job, Bill. Thanks again for all guys. All right, so that was stage 21, and I'll have Ryan start us off with that one. Yeah, so screwed the pooch on that one. Uh, it was definitely in my mind from... But I believe was, like you said, the last stage of the last episode where we finally dropped the shot. I dropped the shot, and I started to have the theory of like, hey, I feel like that was a perfect break, but maybe it was a mental thing. So I'll just get out of my headspace and go into the next one, and it's going to be what it's going to be. Well, I didn't really get out of my headspace as well as I was hoping, clearly because I forgot to dial dope. But the wind call was perfect, so would have drilled that target, but... <laughs> Forgot to dial that dope on, so that's 100% on me, uh, and it costed us as a uh, as a team a point because of my failure there. So uh, I learned my lesson from that and moved forward, and I don't think I had another issue with not dialing dope on, in that competition since then. So it was a good learning point. Uh, after that, uh, we still made sure we had our good communication, talking. Phil kept me up with wind. I made sure I was executing fundamentals. I wasn't seeing elevation issues i think those targets were a little bit forgiving enough and elevation wise that it didn't present itself uh until the next stage which we'll get into but uh overall that stage other than me not being in the right frame of mind and forgetting to dial dope on that first shot i think it went pretty well overall you got anything on that one the, uh the only thing i have on that one was obviously we were forced to shoot from a tripod uh because the grass was so tall and again uh you know, having a tripod with you um, in situations like that, even, you know, in a realistic hunting scenario, uh, I've definitely, especially this year in Wyoming, grass has been, or we've had so much um, rain in the spring that uh, doing a couple of our scouting trips and hunting trips, um, grass has been super, super tall and getting in the prone, there's no way to be able to, you know, get into a position to, to shoot a target. So um, I'm glad that that stage specifically, even though we're not really shooting over terrain, but shooting over vegetation was was clear. And um, I like the, for uh, Verl, the match director, I love that he put the uh, antelope target in there and just having yep. to shoot the vitals. So that was uh, that was cool. But that's all yep. I got on, on that stage. So yeah, cool. and then here is um, stage 22, which is immediately following. And actually, before we get into this, yeah. I didn't take the hint. I think because we <laughs> were we were already um, a little discombobulated from being a little overconfident and then starting to quote unquote bleed points um, that, you know, we started talking and chatting with the rest of the guys in our squad. And Tanner, who was actually one of our students, came through an advanced course. Um, he had asked... Uh, me um, with the Kestrel, like, hey, isn't there a way to, to figure out what the mover speed is uh, on a Kestrel? And I showed him, you know, the, the Kestrel technique uh, without even realizing, because they had a banner and stuff like that up to essentially hide the mover. 
Um, but then, yeah, we'll roll it. We roll it right into 22, and then next thing you know, there's a moving target, and we're like, Yeah, I was actually, it didn't click with me either because uh, Phil told him how to do it with the Kestrel, and then I told him my method, which uh, some of you guys that are following me on Instagram, you guys probably saw my video and my method of how I go about movers, which I'll get more into that when we debrief that stage and why it pissed me off even more. But uh, it, we neither of us took that hint, and we totally should have, which looking back at it, it's like, that was so random to talk about a mover. We probably should have taken that as a clue, but it's what it is. So here's uh, stage 22. You said the observation, you said the shooting points are right in front of the concrete? As long as you can touch the shooting points. Or, okay. Yeah, that, that's all. I don't care if you're in front, left, right, on okay. top, I don't care. You said Ellen, you guys are shooting civil. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Okay. Uh, let's start walking up. Trigger cam. Trigger cam's on. All right, I've got, what's your biggest thing you see? Uh, I got a black flag behind a tree. Okay, that's the far right ladder, closer to the far right ladder limit of, of this T post here. I've got a Bobcat 22. So from. Oh, oh, I see. You got a little moving target. Phil, in between the banners is where it's got. Okay. In between the banners? Yeah. Gotcha. 380 for the target one. All right, you see the banner, the black banner? Yeah, yeah. Two of them. Yeah. What I give you for distance? 380. Okay, 380. Second target is. Four, about 400. So uh, three point, the 390. Do dial for 390. So that's for you, one, one seven. Yep, one seven. Okay. And where's the second target? So the second target's the moving target. So you see the black flag? Yeah. You'll see the mover moving left to right. Mover, but where's the other one? So from the black flag, follow that berm left. Got it. All right, one six dialed. Stand by, stand by. I need to get a mover speed. I've got about half mil. Uh, I would do I would do a mil to center. Mil. And a, I would dial a tenth left. Maybe point, point, point 0.8 to center. All right. Well, the first one's the stationary, right? Yeah, for first to stationary. I'm on it. All right. Coming at you. Over the top. Coming down. Two tenths. I'm on it. Impact. Dial on to the next target. All right. Next target is four hundred uh, 390. I'm going to go one five. One five. Dial it tenth right. And hold uh, uh mill to center. Mill to center? Yeah, when when it crosses back. Maybe point eight to center. A mill to center. One one five. One five to center. Too much. Next move, move positions. Three. What's 
the first system? One four. All right, I'm on it. Hold straight up. Maybe a tenth right. Over the top. I'm sending it again. Over the top. You hit low. Target two. Dial the 390. Uh, you tried one five, two one three. Once it moves in the banner, it's, it's hidden right now. Do one three, one four. One, one three. That was low. Give me one four. Right to left. Target one. Keep your feet. All right, 390. Eight, one, seven. With the wind, give me more lead. <coughs> Go, uh, one, six, one, five. Two Back. Uh, one, four. One, four. The center with a two-tenths right wind. Okay. Okay, so stage 22, this is where I think the wheels start to fall off the bus between us. Oh, yeah. And again, we'll um, have Ryan take it away because he's the first shooter. Yeah, so uh, surprise, surprise, mover presents itself and we're like, damn it, that, <laughs> that now the conversation makes sense on why that came up. Uh, he, he leased it, I forgot what the range was, I think it was around 390, 380, somewhere in there. Uh, so I'm not going to get into my method of engaging movers, but essentially what I did was count it as a 300 yard instead of a 400 yard, which is what I should have done in rounding up with my count. And it messed me up mentally and what I was thinking on top of the fact that I already took from the previous stage. I was now even deeper in a rabbit hole in my own mental state of mind. And so that was messing with me uh, with the mover. But before that mover happened was the very first target before that, the stationary one, uh, you guys could see it too, completely stable. I pressed that shot. If anything, I was even favoring a tenth low on the plate. Uh, I think I was doing that intentionally, just in case. And it went over the top of that uh, bobcat, I think it was. And then I was like, all right, dude, like, I know that's not me. Like, I know I'm in a bad state of mind, but I know that's not me. That shot should have connected. And so then that's when I was like, I'm coming down two tenths, uh, impacted it and then went to the mover. I was letting you do your thing, getting a, a lead uh, on top of me doing my miscalculation, if you will, uh, mentally, that you, you didn't see or hear me talk about, but I was doing it mentally in the process. And then finally, I was just like, screw it, I'm going with what Phil said because I'm not in the right frame of mind right now. He said, I think a mil uh, initially or one five mil like and then that. you were behind it oh yeah i was and, behind it and then you sent it again but you sent the wrong correction correct i held two five instead of one five because i again i was getting mad <laughs> and now i got even more mad because i was like that leads too much and i didn't realize until looking at the trigger cam footage i was like i'm broke at two five <laughs> i was like that's on me and so then 
Uh, it was, we had to go back to the stationary one again. Yeah, you moved up from yeah, one moved, side of the concrete to the second side of the concrete. Shot the stationary one. This time, with that corrected data on from the previous position, I impact like, Love. it like ricocheted off the bottom of it yeah. and then into the pole. He yeah. gave us the point for it. But now I'm like, all right, dude, now this is low. Like, what is going on? And then finally, you know, we do the mover and it connects. That was hands down throughout the entire two-day competition. It was our worst stage uh, bar none. And that was on me. Uh, but that's really where now I was confident. I've One, I need to get my headspace right. Two, I'm having elevation issues because I know for a fact some of these shots are not me. Uh, the two and a half mil lead is 100% me, but sailing it over the top of a bobcat when I'm perfectly stationary, that's not me. And so that's where I was like, now I'm getting pissed off because I remember before we went to the competition, it was like, we were like having issues, I think, with the hand loads. Like we were trying to, like I cleaned it, but it was taking forever to speed up. Like it didn't go back to its velocity that we had uh, clocked it at. And I think right around this point in the stage is where, or in the match, is where my theory is that it kind of, something internal ballistic wise happened and now it started to pick up, maybe. And I don't have an explanation for it, but it was what it was and we rolled with it. And then uh, Phil, I, th I think he cleaned it right after that. Yeah. So then I was in a deeper mental state once he cleaned it, which I was glad he did. But then I was like, dude, I'm the only guy costing us points right now. Like he haven't dropped a single point. And so, it's like, if it's just me, that's one thing, but when I start to affect someone else, now it's like, that bothers me even more, because it's like, I'm responsible for, for your life. <laughs> like, so, um, it was just a overall bad stage. Uh, full disclosure, they ended up dropping <laughs> that stage because the mover went down uh, for some of the teams. So to just make it even across the board, they scrapped that stage off the points. Um, and yeah, full transparency, that's what bumped us into third place is because they dropped that stage. So I felt bad about it, but I mean, it wasn't like I requested it or asked it, but it was what it was. So they dropped it and it bumped us to third. So cool, kind of. I felt bad about it, but it is what it is. Yeah, uh, the only thing I didn't, because it, it just came up at us, um, I just started with a one mil, assuming that one mil would, because of how wide the target yeah. was, um, it would have at least connected, you know, one, two for about a um, two and a half, three mile an hour mover at hours. that distance yeah. is, is typically a good connect. Um, so I just started at one to center, ho hoping that he would connect. But, you know, because of how thin that target was. Um, I think you said you know, one of the rounds went under. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Based off, I remember. Um, but then when he shot, obviously, we don't know that when he shot the two and a half, I when I, I thought he, I thought I overcorrected his correction, um, but then obviously you saw that when I shot the mover, I u ended up using like one three. So uh, it was a three mile an hour mover when you do the back math um, at that distance. So um, yeah, so that that was that stage, and then um, we went over to stage one, uh, which was a bunch of prayer dogs, but that kind of helped us. Obviously, prayer dogs are yeah. not very. Uh, wind forgiving, but very vertically forgiving, and that kind of put us back, um, bounce back from that previous stage because we both cleaned that one. Yeah. Uh, like I talked about, uh, our cameraman Dakota, his um, the batteries. Uh, I think the memory card. Di up. No, died on that one. The oh, batteries died. died. Yeah, so uh, not good PCCs yeah. and PCIs. Um, it was good. It was a good stage. That was right after lunch. We had a good break. I kind of had a chance to like somewhat decompress. Uh, after that stage with the mover, we went and checked zero, and I think it was like a tenth or two low. Yeah, yeah, you were low. But I was also high over target, which yeah. means there was probably a four-tenth different. Whatever the case was, I don't yeah. think I touched it. I just, for the remainder of the two days, I just took, I think it was like a tenth or two off Take, all my dope. Yeah, yeah. And I just rolled with it. I'm like, I'm not touching anything. It just is what it is. I'm going to subtract this from the dope. But then we had a good break with lunch. Um, they didn't have enough lunch. So yeah, who was yeah. the uh, match director? Um, what was his name? Merle. Yeah, great guy. He and I was like, I got a plenty of snacks for no, you. No, that well, tra so, Travis was the one. Travis, that, yeah, that was yeah, it. Sorry, he, sorry. So Travis got us a bunch of food. Yeah. Uh, we kind of decompressed and hung out in the uh, bed of the truck, and then we started fresh with a fresh mindset going uphill to the Prairie Dog stage, and then those things were definitely not forgiving at all, like Phil said. Uh, got my confidence back cleaning that. 
And from that point on, I was pretty good to go for the rest of the day. Um, I think I only dropped another one or two rounds for the entire entirety of the day, which you guys will get into that with the next episodes. But that's what happened with the Prairie Dog. So now the stage two, stage two that you guys uh, are about to see, that's where now I'm a little bit in a better mindset. So here is stage two. That's fine. Oh, I didn't see anything up here. Sorry. No, you're all good. Just stands out to me. Directly behind it. One one. Let me get out. Four seventy. Got it? I don't see the sheep. Alright, so you see the placker? Got it, yep. Sheep is directly behind. Got it. Four seventy? Target two, 470, uh, four mile an hour is about 0.2, I'm gonna go 5.3, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 
three ten. Yeah. That two ten's kind of hitting like that. Yeah, you're fine. Ten two. Ten two. Ten two tenths left. Um, okay, stage two, a little bit of a hiccup. Uh, the memory cord got full in this one, so th that's why there was that weird pause between Ryan and me shooting. Uh, but this was a great stage uh, in terms of uh, just uh, being able to, again, utilize the tripod using um, it in a reverse uh, style mm -hmm. um, slope. And uh, targets, again, were, uh, I mean, the targets were not very generous, right? So like you, you, you couldn't just um, slack or slouch. Uh, you had to make sure that you built a really solid position. Um, but one of the things that, you know, as we are looking through the videos, at least one of the things that I, I took away from this, um, as much as Ryan um, hates to, or I guess, I don't know if that's the correct word, hates to admit, but um, you were essentially my win right? Because you, you would go first in front of me. <laughs> yeah, I had but, to make Philip Vallejo look good. But because, uh, <laughs> I, I think because, again, just my experience in, uh, competitive shooting PRS, I know that um, I don't need as much time to build a position and I can adapt. So um, when Ryan gets his tripod set up, you know, there's not much, you know, tripod set up for me that I need to, uh, to make that position work. Uh, again, I think just based off my experience in dealing with tighter timelines and whatnot. And so, you know, looking at the footage, um, you know, being able to quickly adapt to that specific height that Ryan built with his tripod. Um, again, just comes naturally for me um, versus if we were to switch it, um, I think, you know, we would probably would be, you know, a little tighter on time, if that makes sense. Um, even though I, I probably would have been a little faster, um, either way, I didn't want you to feel like you were stressed on time, even though there was a couple times, a couple stages where I was like, hey, we gotta hurry up, yeah. so. Uh, that stage, yeah, so, I, like Phil said, I was kind of winning. Um, I was kind of same thing with the movers. Like I'm kind of like I for all of day one, I think, right? Or did we do it for day two? We did for both. We yeah. did for both. So days, the entire yeah. match, uh, I went first, yeah. and so it was kind of a good way of like kind of being the prairie dog, no pun intended, and trying to see what the or I guess guinea pig, not prairie dog. <laughs> so being the guinea pig, I had prairie dogs in my mind. So not being the guinea or being the guinea pig, and that kind of uh, helped, well, both of us out because it helped him for him about to go up, but then it prepped me for the stage because the stages weren't really far apart. So then going on to the next stage, I kind of at least had an idea and a baseline. Um, but if I didn't agree with the wind call that Phil said, I would tell him what I thought and maybe we would just meet in the middle. So I was making wind calls too, but uh, yeah, I was kind of the guinea pig for it and it worked out really well. Luckily, the winds weren't too crazy until later on in that day. Yeah. Um, and a lot of these animals were forgiving enough in uh, width that you can kind of fudge it. Can't really get away too much with elevation, but you could for windage for most of them. Uh, definitely not the prairie dogs, though. Uh, if you notice my tripod set up in that position, I had the uh, front leg already prepped to be a little longer, understanding that I was going to be at a down slope. Uh, so that's something that maybe you guys can pay attention to if you guys go find yourself in a position You know, you're gonna be at somewhat of an angle uh, and the only reason that helped me is because I did uh, Mammoth sniper challenge in 21 and before seeing the stage I know one of the debrief was you're gonna go to the bleachers and I knew the bleachers go at an angle So I already prepped the front leg to be a little longer to save a couple seconds in setup uh, so the front leg would hit the bleacher right in front of me or that uh, that seat. And so that's what was in my mindset for this match right here. I was like, oh, it's literally the same thing, just on sand. And so that's how I set it up. The rear ones weren't the perfect height, but I was able to adjust those on the fly. But trying to just like analyze the terrain and what you're gonna get into and kind of think more chess, not checkers, and think a couple moves ahead and how you can benefit from this. Uh, that's the mindset I tried to keep. Uh, but yeah, I think we did well on that one. I think we cleaned that one too. Yeah, we cleaned yeah. it. Yep. Yep. So. So that pretty much wraps up episode three. Sorry for the delay. We got super busy this summer. And hopefully for the next episode, we can finish off day one of the NRL Hunter Utah. 
probably be a little longer episode, but that way, you know, there's only a, a few more episodes left for, for day two. But the um, reason why we were so busy this summer is not only our in-person classes, but we've been working on our tripod masterclass, which we finally released. So if you're wondering how we were able to shoot off the tripod so effectively, uh, I've been shooting tri from a tripod since 2000 in uh, seven and you know just the evolution of tripods and techniques and stuff like that and um, we built a full online master class from it since 2020 modern day sniper we have created online master classes from circle of components fundamentals marksmanship intro to long range positional and now our tripod master class so um, if you are trying to figure out how to select a tripod, shoot from a tripod. If you're a hunter, professional military law enforcement sniper, competitive shooter, uh, I promise you will benefit from uh, this tripod, especially if you're looking to attend one of our in-person classes but are not, are not able to. This is just a good way to watch a curriculum at your own pace and kind of um, just see what we do um, because, you know, the trigger cam footage and stuff like that based off of our how-to set up a position, et cetera, et cetera. And it's growing. So we're still reviewing tripods, but that takes time to give honest feedback. So as we start to uh, finish our reviews on individual tripods, we will upload those in there. So you will be fed updated information uh, along as it goes. Get signed up. I will provide the links down below. But uh, appreciate you guys watching this. Thanks for keeping us honest on the series, hitting us up in the DMs. We appreciate all the feedback so far um, for every episode, for the two episodes that we've released so far. And um, even on the uh, sidebar comments for some of the sm uh, small YouTube reels that we've done or short, uh, Instagram shorts. So appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you guys in the next episode. Until then, you guys know the drill. Keep your face on the gun.